It's okay if you've heard of it and learned it and not practiced it. I think, I was telling Rob this morning, that I think I, I'm, I'm not a slow learner, but I'm a layered learner. Like, I think I spent 100 hours with RPR, used to be called Be Activated, before I started putting my hands on kids. 100 hours, a couple years. So it's okay if you're slow getting into the game. Uh, but it's a, it's a fascinating thing, and that's Chris. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever met a stranger dude. I, he's, we're talking today. His brain is like... And uh, the only possible stranger dude is Douglas Hugh. <laughs> uh, Douglas uh, uh, presented barefoot. He's a surfer from Cape Town, South Africa. I'm like, how? I mean, I've probably written more about Douglas than any person in the world. Um, and so, yeah, some weird stuff going on here. Uh, it started off being called Be Activated. It was a terrible name, a terrible brand. So what Chris and Cal and JL did was they said, let's call it something different, RPR, Reflexive Performance Reset. Let's, let's market it to coaches and athletes to empower them. So that's JL and Chris and Cal. Cal is, uh, if you don't know Cal, he's one of the most famous SSE people in the world. Uh, the writer, he put out the book, Triphasic Training. So why RPR? This is one of the most important things. This is something that, even though I was a coach's kid and I coach, you know, I always thought that the job of a coach was one of the biggest jobs pre-game to motivate his team. To amp up, I, I remember my dad said that athletes are capable of superhuman things with adrenaline. And he used, I don't know if it's true, but you know, like some parent saw his kid run over by a car. Parent came and lifted the car. That was the stuff that we, you know, like world records are never set in practice. They're always set in front of 100,000 people because of adrenaline. And so that's why, you know, we turn into Al Pacino before the game. It's a triage! You know, like, and we, you know, try to get guys all ramped up. And then Douglas Hill came and said, no, that's sympathetic. That's fight or flight. I said, I thought we wanted fight or flight. He goes, no, you're forgetting the third F. Fight, flight, or freeze. And I said, is that why 90% of all athletes at the state track meet underperform? Yes. They've never had that level of like uh, adrenaline before. And it's not a performance state. It's a state of fear and a state of fear is not a state of performance. You say, no, they're just excited. It's the same drug. If you see a, like a large Rottweiler baring its teeth and you take off running, that's adrenaline. And if you are stepping out in front of 30,000 people when you've never run in front of more than 30, that's adrenaline too. So it is a state of fear. It is not a state of performance. Parasympathetic is a state of performance. Basically, it just means relaxed. Relaxed. Now, is it easy to... So we should just tell our athletes at the state meet, just relax. And that doesn't work, does it? We have to give kids tools. And that's what we're talking about here. We have to give kids tools. And it's powerful. I, I saw something just the other day uh, on Twitter. God, I hope Twitter stays around. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> damn, Elon Musk. Um, it was a pitcher. You know, like, they're talking about big pitches, big games. And the anxiety that a pitcher has in that moment and how that anxiety has to be fought. You understand that? Like that anxiety is not a state of performance. So that nervousness, that fear, that uncontrolled emotion has to be fought. But what do you have to fight that with? I think what they say is you have to fight it with some of the energy that is required to throw the pitch. 
it's kind of like fighting the anxiety takes away from the energy required to make the great pitch. That made sense to me. So if, if you have a kid that's, and he has to fight to stay loose, already his performance goes down some. So we're gonna give kids tools and coaches tools. Uh, why RPR? Uh, people are faster, they're more durable. Uh, uh, the uh, camp point where Brad Dixon coaches, they do RPR before every game and just a 20 minute warm up. 20 minute warm up. You know, most football coaches are like, two hours of warm up <laughs> because of all the, and they're just all crazy. So, so his kids, like 40 minutes for a game, are laying on their backs doing RPR. They're getting into a sympathetic state. And so, uh, and so they're going to play fast. Uh, every single guy on his roster is playing today. Not zero injuries. I mean, they've had injuries. Everybody does. I mean, if, you know, if you run into a goalpost, you're still going to get concussed. But teams that do RPR limit concussions by like 80%. It's unbelievable. Magic. Probably the best thing is it declutters the brain. If you understand what clutter is in the brain? Don't we live lives of clutter? And aren't we better when we're, like right now, my prefrontal cortex is totally dislodged. I don't know where my words are coming from. And there's absolutely no clutter in my brain. I'm not thinking about how embarrassed I was. I made that wrong turn yesterday on the way here. I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about the fact that my wife it's, it's like, you know, you've been crazy for the last three days. You know, you've not been present. I'm like, yeah, I got eight hours of talking to do. So I'm not worried about those things right now because I'm totally immersed in what I'm doing. And that's the way we want athletes to be. We want to be that way as coaches. Uh, <laughs> this is a great story at, at UMass. Not, not a great football school, but the coaches really want to win. Uh, their head coach and offensive coordinator both get RPR before a game. Not because they play, but because of that third thing. That there are breathing techniques, basically. Oh, by the, by the way, this stuff is all like voodoo seeming, except for the breathing part. The breathing part is a part of religions. It's a part of yoga. It's a, a, a yeah, breathing is, can really change us. Uh, Nazareth football, I did an article the reason why it only goes to 2015 is because I did an article in 2015 I used this graph. Uh, they started uh, RPR in 2012, and this is compiled by their team doctor. Uh, the first bar are any injury that caused them to miss a day of anything. The second bar was bad injuries like concussions, fractures, and surgeries. You're going to have Injuries in football, by the way, this is their entire freshman, sophomore, and senior, their entire thing. And they were state champs in 2015. Um, and they had a 53-man roster, and every single guy played the championship game in the 14th week. A lot of football programs can't say that. But RPR really seemed to reduce. I know this is just one school. But it's, you know, tons of anecdotal stuff end up, we can start making some conclusions based on anecdotal evidence. Now, this looks kind of weird, but everything uh, is all about zone one. Zone one is movement in our body starts here and radiates outward. So we're going to try to take care of zone one first. Uh, these are the different points uh, and, and I'm going to hit a lot of these, but I'm going to really, I'm a simplifier, so I'm going to really simplify things so that maybe you can go and start using this like tonight. But you probably, you, you, once you learn these things, you might really, really want to go get a class, you know, like go to a one day Saturday thing or something. They also have online courses that are really good. 
So this is Julian Love. He plays for the Giants now. He was playing for Nazareth in 2015, Player of the Year, Chicago Tribune. Um, All-American in Notre Dame. Now he plays for the Giants. Julian Love, a uh, terrific player. And uh, yeah, I felt kind of creepy taking these pictures of him at a doctor's office. But, but anyway, the first thing we do is diaphragm uh, activation. And that's when we, we press on the sternum and on the lower rib, the bottom of the lower rib. That's diaphragm. That's where we start. And that will allow us to belly breathe better. Your, step, your chest will stay the same, and your belly will like, look like a balloon. In through the nose, out through the mouth, make a sound. Before we get all activated and stuff, um, I, I, I just want to show you something. Coach, can, can I show you something here? Yeah. yeah. Come on. You look strong. Thanks. Uh, just just hold, hold your arm out, and when I, when I say resist, don't let me like push it down, okay? Okay. Okay. One, two, three, resist. Okay. Everybody see that? Okay. I'm going to take you out pretty strong. Uh, I'm going to take you out of that right now. I want you to, uh, first of all, chest breathe like you're scared, like uh, six times, like this. Now do like three air squats. Up, arm again. One, two, three. Okay. He's got weaker. But not really weaker though, is it? Like. It's the same muscles, but muscles are capable of being in different states of readiness. You've heard of, you know, like, uh, well, let, let's get, get you strong again. Let's, uh, let's belly breathe like five times, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Feel your belly, no chest. Slow down. And then, then now we'll strike a power pose, like we're shooting an arrow like this. Okay, now put your arm out. One, two, three, resist. Now some people think, you know, like he came with me or something, you know, like. <laughs> Penny <Penny-lighter. laughs> later. Good job, good job, go have a seat. <laughs> you can have a seat now. <laughs> uh, infinitely stronger. Okay. Right. Night and day strong. And there's like five or six different like wow things you can do for your team. By the way, you have to sell this. If you just start telling them to do this stuff, they're not gonna buy it. So there, there's some wow things that you have to show them uh, in order to get them to buy it. But it can be, you realize that's the same deltoid, right? That, but yet, so we can be in a better state of readiness to perform. Imagine if you had a whole body like that. With a brain that was decluttered, you heard, uh, I think O'Malley talked about flow. You know what flow is? It's a state of, there's only one thing on your mind. I got in a state of flow one time in a college basketball game. I went eight for 10 from the field in the first half. Not a single easy shot. I swear to God, the rim seemed like it's that big. It seemed like, you know, you know how Steph Curry must feel every night? <laughs> the rim must just feel big to him. That's a state of flow. Would it be important if your kids felt like there were tools that could get them in a state of flow? Wow, we're on to something here. All right, with diaphragm activation, uh, we end up uh, belly breathing, and if you watch Julian's chest here, this is what belly breathing looks like. I always love doing this. It's like, you know, just, you know, I'm just clicking back and forth, but almost like it's animated here. That's what belly breathing looks like. Believe it or not, we have seen kids that cannot belly breathe. Isn't that weird? 
I mean, like, they're, they're like 100% chest breathers. And there's some weird things that, like one of the things, it's kind of weird, but you tell them like, okay, pretend like you're smoking a joint. And, you know, that's already weird, right? <laughs> These are kids, but they like it, you know? And, and they, you know, like, <sighs> that's one of the tricks. You could say you're sucking through a straw, okay? And then, and then there's like, the, 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 what's that point called? I call it the teletubby point. The teletubby <laughs> point. That if you press right here, it's, I mean, it's all, it's really voodoo stuff. I mean, like, it's, it's, and I like saying that because it kind of disarms people that say this is bullshit. I so, said, right, it's total voodoo, but it works. And then you kind of bring them back in. Like, just agree with them. Agree. You're right, it's crazy. It's nuts. They say, I think it's all in their head. So be it. If they're faster, let's just <laughs> pretend like it works. It disarms them. Man, there's a lot of people that want to, you know, like, troll us.